Good day. My name is Lara Quentrell Thomas, Chairman of Regency Recruitment and Resources Limited, and this is my Take 10 with TVET. Today we're going to have a very short conversation, but a very important one, about the evolving workplace and the skills that are going to be required for the future of work. There is no question that the pandemic has radically changed the way we all work. Millions of people across the world have either been furloughed or lost their jobs. Many of us had had to rapidly adjust to working from home as our offices closed. Many companies have either shut down or had to send home workers. And essential workers, those in the healthcare services, manufacturing, port services, found themselves under new protocols to reduce the spread of this terrible virus. So every single business, every single facet of our lives has been impacted in some way. And this has led to massive challenges for employers, governments, policymakers, both in terms of providing support, financial support, grants and so on now, but also looking to the future, looking to what changes will come as a result of the pandemic and how the world of work and our lives may be changed forever. For many people, working from home came as a big relief. For many years, people have been asking for the opportunity to work from home because of traffic, childcare commitments, and other reasons. For many companies, this is a great option because it means we can reduce overheads, we can get rid of our physical office space. But for many of us, working from home, working in isolation, away from our colleagues, has brought its own challenges. So in the new world of work, in the new normal, as it's being called, what are some of the skills that are going to be required of all of us, but particularly young people who are coming into the workplace, who are looking to build their careers, to make sure that we can learn from COVID, we can learn from the new hybrid dynamic workplace that we're all working in, to build more resilient organizations, more productive citizens, and then by extension, a much more robust and resilient country and economy was turned everything upside down overnight. And so many people didn't have the chance to retool and reskill, to adapt to the new realities of our workplace. We've all been using Zoom and webinars. We've all been doing our email and looking online to get training and access to different materials over the last year and a half. But is this going to continue? Is this the new normal for us? Will we continue to have all of our training delivered virtually? Will we continue to work alongside artificial intelligence? What really does this mean for those of us in the workplace, whether as employees or employers, and those of us really creating policy around education, training and development for our national economy? So a number of the studies that I referred to have shown that there are four key areas that individuals need to pay attention to as they think about what skills they can develop, either building on existing skills or learning new skills for this new normal, the future of work. The first is in the area of cognitive ability. And this speaks to your ability to think critically, your ability to look at a situation and apply solutions, to think with logic, and reason rather than emotion or bias. So your cognitive abilities will include things like your ability to plan work, to prioritize work, your ability to manage time and tasks, your ability to be agile in the workplace. So some of the things you can do to train your cognitive abilities would include things like project management, time management workshop, prioritizing tasks, but also going more deeply into critical thinking and creative thinking. And what does that mean? What does that look like in the workplace? So your cognitive abilities are really going to be something that employers are going to look for. We don't just want you to bring problems to us. We want you to come to us with solutions, ideas, thinking about ways to fix what's wrong. The second area are your interpersonal skills. And your interpersonal skills are things like your ability to negotiate win-win situations, your ability to craft a vision for yourself, 
your department, your organization, your awareness of the organization you work for, the industry that you're in. This speaks to your ability to do research, to read journals from your industry and from your sector so that you're kept up to date on trends, what's happening, so that you can learn the new skills that are being offered. Your interpersonal skills, very important now in the world of remote working and hybrid workplaces, also speak to your ability to show empathy and emotional intelligence. And you know, empathy is something that many leaders have looked for, been asked to demonstrate during COVID. We have been asked to manage employees that we can't see face to face. We're not sitting next to, and they're dealing with their own issues at home, family issues, money issues, job security issues, all of those things. And we've been asked to move from measuring productivity and KPIs and performance to a world where we're kinder to each other. We show more empathy. We, show, we listen more actively. We communicate with more kindness. And these are important skills in how we rebuild our world, our country, but also in the leaders of the future. And what this kind of leadership does is it fosters a culture of inclusion and diversity. The third area is self-leadership. And this is really about having the courage to take risks, to learn new things, to take bold steps. The really successful people in life are those who commit to a lifelong learning. They, every single day, every single opportunity they get, they're learning something new. They're reading something different. They're talking to people that they haven't met before. A lifelong learner is somebody who is always ready and open for new ideas and new experiences. And that then makes them a better leader, a better coworker, better member of society. So lifelong learning is absolutely essential. Your self-leadership also should drive you to be an innovator, to be somebody who comes up with new ideas, somebody who is self-motivated to create things, to share information and knowledge. It's also an important skill for coping with the uncertainty that this world presents, even before COVID. Life is always uncertain. There's a saying that there is nothing as constant as change, and it's true. Changes every day, it's every year, it's every month, it's around us all the time. And one of the ways that you can cope with the uncertainty that change brings is by being a self-leader, somebody who's mastered self-leadership, lifelong learning, that confidence that it gives you, that courage that it gives you is so important to make you resilient. And then third, the fourth area is your digital skills. And of course, with what's been happening in the world, it's essential now more than ever to be fully digitally literate. And that's not just knowing how to compose an email or participate in a Zoom webinar. It goes far, deep, far, far deeper than that. This is around learning about things like data analytics, artificial intelligence, the ethics of digital business, algorithms, logical thinking, cybersecurity, programming literacy. There's so much to learn to become truly a digital professional. So the four things that employers are looking for in this new post-COVID is probably not even the right thing to say because COVID is going to be with us for a very long time. But for the new reality that we're all living in, your cognitive skills, solution-oriented, planning, project management, all of those things. Secondly, your interpersonal skills, your negotiation, your ability to listen, to show empathy and to show care. Thirdly, your self-leadership, mastery of certain topics, lifelong learning, setting a vision and demonstrating integrity. And fourthly, your digital skills. Now, these things, of course, are built on your foundation of academic or vocational other skills training that you may have. These are not exclusive to having an O-level CXE in English or having a certificate in welding or whatever it is that you're doing. These are skills that you build on top of what you have now, 
to really, truly master and be successful in the workplace of the future. Thank you very much for spending some time with me. Thank you for joining the NTA and the very best of luck to you.